First and foremost, I want to give a special thanks to the people over at Alpha Network for sending me all of these products. Thank you. So I did a previous video on this adapter right here. This is the Alpha AW US 036 ACM. It's using a MediaTek chipset. So this was very easy for us because it works out of the box. We're going to be looking at a different Alpha adapter today, and that is this mammoth right here. This is the Alpha AW US 1900. Now this adapter is using a Realtek chipset. Now I'm sure everyone is tired by now of hearing me say Realtek and MediaTek, but it is very important that you understand the difference and the implications, especially for noobs that have never had an Alpha adapter before, and this may be the first time that they are using one. So because this adapter is using a Realtek chipset, it's not going to work out of the box for us on Linux, but that's okay. I've done many videos on this, and we're going to show you how, in this video, you can get the right set of drivers so that we can get this adapter up and running on Linux. I'm going to be doing this on Ubuntu Linux, and I'll also show you that it works on Kali Linux as well. Now, one thing that I would like to point out to everybody is that for all of the adapters that you see on this table that I have done videos for, if you look in the description of the video, I have included Amazon affiliate links for any of the adapters that I have done videos on. So if you are interested in purchasing any of these adapters, check the description of my video or videos. And if you are able to, please click on the link and make the purchase through the affiliate Amazon link that has been provided. And that will give me a small portion of the proceeds. It's a beautiful way to support my channel and the work that I am doing and still get the product that you want. Because you definitely want one of these adapters. We are going to head over to the home page for Alpha Network. And that is going to be located at the URL of alpha.com.tw. If I come up here near the top of the page and hover over support, we have downloads and documents. I'm going to click on documents. That'll take me to this page. Then I'm going to come up here to product and I'm going to open up the sub menu. We're going to scroll down and we're going to look for our adapter, which is AWUS 1900. If I click on that, it takes us to this page where we have links for drivers, depending on if we are doing this on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So we're going to click on the link for Linux support page. So here is the Linux support page for RTL 8814AU based products. All right, so the main thing that I'm interested in on this page are these links over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to open each one of these up in another tab, starting with this one right here. And then we will do this one. And finally, this last one right here. All right, so the first one that we're going to take a look at is going to be at github forward slash aircrack dash ng forward slash rtl 8814au. Now, when I originally attempted to do the installation, this is the first approach that I took. And that is mainly because I have done previous videos where I have installed a different driver. And if I open up the main page here in another tab, uh, we can see that we have two different repos, one for RTL 8814 and another one for the 8812. I have done previous videos where I installed the driver from this repo for other alpha adapters. So naturally, I am inclined to take a look at this repo for this adapter since it is using that chipset. Unfortunately, however, this installation method did not work for me. But I do not believe it is a waste of time to take a look at this because while it did not work for me, it still may work for others. And that's not to say that this will not be a more viable method in the future. So while I am not going to follow the installation instructions on this page, it is worth pointing it out to you as a possible method. My Ubuntu Linux machine, I went through every one of these installation methods and every one ultimately failed. So I tried to do the build and install. I tried the DKMS installation 
and I also tried the Ubuntu DKMS package installation. Every one of them failed. So with that being said, we're going to move on to the next installation method. So I'm over here at the GitHub page. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, so I'm just going to say not really sure about that. But in any event, this is the Linux driver for the USB Wi-Fi adapters that are based on the RTL 8814AU chipset. This was updated five days ago as of the recording of this video, so it definitely is receiving good updates. Of all the different installation methods that I'm showing you, this is the one that I think is the preferred way. This is the one that I personally did for my system. So if we scroll down the page underneath installation steps, first thing you're going to want to do is update and upgrade your system, and that is going to be done by running sudo apt update ampersand ampersand sudo apt upgrade. I've already done this, so I am not going to do this again, but you do want to make sure that you do that first and foremost. And if you have to reboot, then go ahead and reboot the system and meet me back at this point in the video. Since we are on an Ubuntu Linux machine, we're going to be following this step right here, which is going to be sudo apt install dash y build essential dkms git and iw. So I'll click over here on the right hand side to copy that. And we're going to go down to the terminal emulator and I'm going to paste that in and hit enter. I have already installed all these packages and they are all up to date. Okay, so the next step, it says to create a directory to hold the downloaded driver. And it's saying to create this directory. You can choose to uh, do this step as it is on the page, but I know that on my Ubuntu Linux machine, there already exists a directory that is in forward slash user forward slash source. So I'm not going to create this directory. Instead, I'm going to CD into forward slash user forward slash source, and then I'm going to download the driver. So I will copy this link right here. We're going to go down to the terminal, and I'm going to CD into forward slash user forward slash source. And that is because on Ubuntu, this is where your various drivers are going to be stored. And if I do an LS, we can actually see the uh, drivers for a previous adapter that I did a video on that was using the 8812 driver for the chipset. So we'll go ahead and do that git clone from right inside of our user source directory. And I'm going to have to rerun that with sudo privileges. After the git clone has finished, we can cd inside of the directory. And if I do an ls, this is what it looks like. Now you see we have this file over here called supported device IDs. And if I run ls usb and pipe that into grep one more time, uh, we can see that we have the product and vendor ID right here. And if I cat out the contents of the supported device IDs file, we will actually see that same product and vendor or product and device ID right here. So this is a quick way to check the specific IDs to see if your adapter matches any of the ones in this list. And the final thing that we're going to do here is going to be to run the install driver bash script and we're going to have to run that with sudo privileges. So I'll go ahead and type sudo dot forward slash install dash driver dot sh. I will do n for no because I do not want to edit the driver options file. And it's probably recommended to reboot, but for purposes of this video, I'm going to do N. But if you are following along with this video, I recommend that you do Y and reboot now. And that's it. 
you should have no issues and this driver should be installed for you and at this point you should be able to make use of your alpha awus 1900 so if i cd back one directory and run ls we now have this new directory over here that has been created that holds the driver that we just installed and we can also run the command sudo dkms status and that should show you information on the driver that we just installed and we have this line right here for me it's the last line and this lets me know that the rtl 8814 au driver was successfully installed on my system so now just for good measure i'm going to rerun the d message command and i'm going to unplug my awus 1900 adapter and i'm going to plug it back in and I'm going to do a control C. And what I want you to see in this output is going to be this section right here, these four lines. So when I ran this the first time earlier in this video, we did not have those lines because I had yet to install the driver. But now that the driver is installed and we have plugged the adapter back in, we do get information coming back to us from D message that suggests to us that the driver is in fact now being used by the adapter. So this is very good. This is what you wanna see. So once again, of the various methods that I'm showing you, I believe this to be the preferred method. This is the method that I utilize. So at this point, if the driver is installed for you, then you can move on from the video. And if not, then we're gonna show you some alternate methods that you can utilize. Okay, so I'm over here at the GitHub page for aircrack-ng forward slash RTL8812AU. So you might be asking yourself if we are supposed to install the RTL8814AU driver, why am I over here at the GitHub page for RTL8812? Well, if you look at the right-hand side underneath about what you will actually see is that this is a set of drivers, not only for the 8812AU, but the 21AU and the RTL8814AU. Now I've done previous videos using different alpha adapters where I installed this set of drivers and it works great. Before I actually installed the previous set of drivers, I noticed that my Alpha AWS 1900 adapter was already working on my system. And that's how I was able to discover that it was in fact using this set of drivers. So while I do feel that the previous installation method is the preferred method, this is also a very viable option for you. So if you already have this driver installed in your system, you don't need to go any further. And if the other method or other methods don't work, you have yet another method of installing the drivers right here. So we're going to just quickly go through the installation instructions. The preferred installation is gonna be by using DKMS. So you wanna make sure that you have DKMS installed. And then we're doing a Git clone of this specific branch, branch 5.6.4.2. So we'll just go ahead and copy that command. I'm going to create a directory called alpha and cd inside of that directory. Um, let's go ahead and run sudo apt install dkms. We already have this installed. We'll go ahead and do the git clone on that specific branch. Once the git clone has finished, cd inside of the directory and if we do an ls this is what the inside of that parent directory looks like now as a side note if you want to explore additional resources and take your knowledge of these adapters as well as other wireless adapters much further than that which we are doing in this video i suggest you take a look at the docs directory so if i do an ls on the docs directory we have various pdfs and this is just a tremendous resource for additional learning for example 
if you want to learn how to set or change the debug log for your alpha adapter here's a pdf on that if you want to learn how to enable and verify tdls functionality in your wi-fi driver there's a pdf for that if you want to enable power saving functionality there's a pdf for that and there are a bunch of other pdfs that go into other topics this is i think a often overlooked resource that a lot of people probably have on their systems and they don't even realize it and getting back to the installation process uh, the next step is going to be to run the command sudo make dkms underscore install and ultimately for me this aired out because i have already done this and it cannot add the same module or version combo more than once but for you if you have ran this command for the first time and the installation completed successfully you can then run the command sudo dkms status and what you should see is something similar to what i have up here in these first two lines and this will let you know that the driver has been successfully installed and with that you have yet another method of installing a set of drivers that should get your alpha aws 1900 up and running and the good thing about this method is that this will also work for other alpha adapters that are looking for the 8812 au driver per their chipset and for the final method i'm going to show you how easy it is to get the appropriate drivers from our kali linux machine of all the methods that i've showed you this is going to be by far the easiest as they have made a package available in the apt repositories so i'm going to search in my apt repositories for any packages that are related to realtek and i'm going to do that by running the command apt search realtek and you can see that we have several entries that have come back all related to various realtek drivers and the one that we are looking for obviously is going to be the one that has 8814 in it and we have found a package right here it is referred to as realtek-rtl8814au-dkms if i do apt info and paste in the name of that package we'll get some more information on it and we can see in the description section that this is the realtek rtl 8814au driver in dkms format this package provides the source code for the rtl 8814au linux driver with monitor mode and frame injection to be built with dkms so the last and final command that we need to run to install this is going to be to run the command sudo apt install and we'll give it the name of that package and hit enter okay so the package has finished the installation and there is one additional command that we can run to verify that the driver has been successfully installed and that command is going to be sudo dkms status and we can see that after running this command we do get back that the realtek driver package was successfully added that is what you want to see and from this point your alpha aw us 1900 will be good to go on Kali Linux.